in my daughter's math, um, we had already finished our test number 16 and reviewed that the last few days. And her next lesson was multiplying round numbers mentally, which this is an example of. But she already knows how to do that. And I looked over the lesson, and she already knows how to do all of this. So we're getting ready to skip that whole lesson because we really need to move on. And then in lesson 87, it was multiplying two digit numbers. And she already knows how to do that as well. So we get to skip over lesson 87. Then lesson number 88 was remainders and stories about equal groups. Again, this is about dividing with remainders. She already knows how to do that. Eighty-nine was about mixed numbers and improper fractions. Now we'd already gone over mixed numbers and improper fractions. However, she did need a refresher course. So we did work with this and with this, but since this was a refresher course, we just did those two. And this was very simplistic for her, so we went on to lesson 90, multiplying two two-digit numbers, which she already knows how to do. So we got to skip again. And we've been very behind in this book. It's been taking us forever to get through this book. But because I utilize other resources besides just our Saxon math, she had already learned those and she's been practicing those. So we were able to skip all of those chapters and that's very rare for us. We don't uh, hardly ever get a chance to do that. So we were working today on investigating uh, investigation number nine, investigating fraction with manipulatives. And what we did is, let me grab what we worked with. So for our investigation in our Saxon math book, uh, we used these fraction circles and they're from Teacher Created Resources. And they come in just this little bag here, about the size of a sandwich bag. And you have um, the whole half and then um, fractions broken down into various pieces. Your whole broken down into various fractions. And these are foam. So they're very. They're very soft and they're bendable, which you really don't want to do, but they're very soft and pleasurable to the touch. So children, it's very soft for children to touch. They're very easy to pick up because they're foam. They're not really sliding around much. <clears throat> and so this is what we worked with today. Now the investigation actually has you cutting out um, circles and you can use construction paper and make your own circles. You don't have to have these. If I remember right, I think it was about three dollars for these fraction circles that I bought at our local teacher uh, resource store. And we have used construction paper circles in um, the past, but I just went ahead and spent a little bit to get these for my daughter as just another tactile experience. But we also have this rainbow fraction tiles and it comes in a plastic container <clears throat> that holds all of the pieces together. So let's see if we can get this out for you. So um, my other number 12 is probably in the box. So again this is what we started out with and for a couple of years this is uh, the only fractions uh, manipulative that we had 
and it's called Rainbow Fraction Tiles. And let's see, and it's from Learning Resources. It's from Learning Resources. Okay. And it includes 51 color coded plastic fraction tiles with the tray, 100 fraction stickers, and suggested activities and games. So if you can see, it comes with a set of stickers. But I highly suggest this one um, and the foam circles. But this is a good, solid, sturdy um, tray that they all fit in. And then you can talk a lot about equivalent fractions with this. But it starts out with one solid piece and they're all colored so that the pieces you can easily put away in their sections. See, and they all come out. So then sometimes we pull all of this or just what we need out and put it on the desk. But that's what we use today for our investigation number nine, investigating fractions with manipulatives in our Saxon math. So I hope these ideas are helpful. And uh, these are two items that I would highly suggest if you are homeschooling. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of contact paper from my scrap box and I've taken the piece out and this will allow your fraction tiles to stick right on top of here without being without them moving around all over the place on your desk or wherever your table where your child is working and they'll stay more in place. See? Like that. And then what you can do is once you take the pieces off, save the backing, put it back on your contact paper, get this lined up for you. Get the bubbles out and I'm just going to store this right inside the baggie that it comes in. Now everything's ready and set for the next time we need it. And our little piece of contact paper will help us from these scooting all over the place on the table while we're trying to work with them. So I hope that's a helpful hint.